Hello, everyone. Welcome back to JSA TV and JSA Podcast, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in the digital infrastructure community, leaders like Matt Johns, who is the VP of Sales for CoreSight. Welcome, Matt. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. you having me. Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time. I know it's such a busy conference. There's so much going on, super well attended. Um, so we wanted to just kind of dive right in. You all have had, uh, of course, a, a lot of news come out lately, as you kind of always seem to have. So um, recently, you released an impressive lineup of partners and, and customer news over the past few months. So could you just maybe uh, choose one of those to highlight for us? Sure, of course. One of the more exciting announcements that we came out with is an enhancement to our open cloud exchange. So we recently offered increased bandwidth levels to uh, AWS Direct Connect hosted connections as well as Google Cloud. So we've augmented the network speeds up to 50 gigs of connectivity to public clouds. So uh, we're pretty excited about that because obviously it allows our customers to do higher levels of data transfer to those public clouds. Uh, but we've done it in a very simplistic manner, mm -hmm. meaning Customers can very easily provision on demand these high-level connections and increase their throughput uh, really in just a matter of minutes. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, hopefully more announcements to come, uh, but we continue to innovate on our open cloud exchange and uh, we're excited to deliver that to our customer base today. Excellent, excellent. So getting into a little bit more news, going back a, a few months, over the summer, you all released a State of the Data Center report. Um, so could you uh, let us know, is there anything that maybe surprised you about the findings? Yeah, this is a key report survey that we've done every year. And this is a quantitative survey where we go out to IT leaders in the space and we really, uh, we get some important findings about uh, data center trends, mm -hmm. cloud computing trends and strategies. And one of the things that probably jumped out to us the most was that 94% of IT decision makers are really focused on native data center connections, cloud interconnects really within the data center itself. So the reason for that is we're happy to see that, right, mm -hmm. as, a, as one of the focus areas for these IT leaders, um, because it really does deliver some powerful performance, security, and cost savings when customers can connect to those public cloud on ramps directly out of the data center itself. Yeah. So there's some really real positive business output, business mm -hmm. outcomes that come from that. Yeah, that's that's really awesome. The and it, power of interconnection, right? The power of interconnection. Yes, yeah, absolutely. yeah. So um, what do you see as we kind of wrap up here? We like to ask about trends for 2024 since, believe it or not, we are getting toward the end of the year. So uh, what do you see as um, maybe the top trend or one of the top trends in the data center industry for next year? Well, it shouldn't surprise anybody that artificial intelligence is, uh, seems to be ubiquitous. It seems to be the talk of the town. Uh, understanding that the technology is probably still in early innings. But uh, certainly, you know, what we see trend-wise is probably nine out of ten organizations today are looking to AI mm -hmm. as to how they gain a competitive advantage in business, right? And it's a massive industry. And on a, mm -hmm. on a global level, it's expected to be uh, the, the AI market is probably close to 1.8 trillion dollars by 2030. So it is mm. really, it's here now. It's going to be changing uh, and, and very impactful for everybody. But really, the the benefit for our customers to really take advantage of AI, there's two important pieces that we see. One is you have to have a very sound operational environment. So mm -hmm. these these deployments are very compute intensive. They're very power intensive. So you need to find a facility that can design an engineer to support that type of power capacity that's needed, but also the cooling that's needed. So again, these are AI workloads, which are very intensive in nature from a power and cooling standpoint. So you need to find and partner with somebody who, who has experience in doing that. Mm. The second element I would say is, is really the interconnection piece. You mentioned mm -hmm. interconnection a little bit earlier, but you know the data that's being produced out of these models eventually need to be accessed and need to be distributed. And being in a location where you have a high degree of interconnection and optionality to connect to network providers and public clouds is really going to be key. Mm -hmm. It's not putting that environment just anywhere, but it needs to be put into a well-connected, densely connected, cloud-adjacent type of facility. Yeah. And that's what we're most excited about. 
Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you so much. We're always happy to hear yeah. the latest insights about AI and sustainability and everything that's going on. Um, and thank you, Matt, for joining us here live from DCD, Virginia. Yep, appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Candice. Absolutely. Thank you. And thank you, viewers, for hanging out with us at DCD, Virginia. Stay tuned for more and happy networking. Thank you.